Good morning, everyone. Welcome today. Thank you, Carrie and Carolyn, for that beautiful way to start our service this morning. I know as we gather together, we come each week because we want to know God more fully and to understand his love and his mercy and his justice. And that's a delicate balance between resting in his grace and his love and forgiveness and having a, a healthy fear of who God is and his justice. But this is, listen to what Paul says about knowing God. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. Let's stand together and let's praise the one that we want to know and who we have believed in. Let's sing together hymn 527. I know whom I have believed. Father, we praise you this morning that you've called us, that you know us as your sons and your daughters, that you've known us before the foundation of the earth. Lord, help us to trust in you and rest in your knowledge and your perfect plan. And help us to be ready to give an answer for the hope that is within us. Bless us this day. Amen. Amen.
Father God, ancient of days, thank you for the opportunity to look back and to be reminded again of your great faithfulness, to read the truth of your word that tells us again, your mercies are new every single morning. And thank you that as we are joined together in worship by the power of your Holy Spirit, we are able to see again how you continue to move with strength and power, how nothing and no one will get in your way, how you will continue to draw to yourself all those you so love. So continue to receive our songs and our praise. Please listen as we call out to you in prayer. And thank you for feeding us once again from the timeless truth of your word. We love you, Father, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our faithful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As all God's people say, amen. Please be seated. Unless your name is Chris... And unless you're here this morning representing Cran Hill Ranch. So uh, Chris is here by special invitation this morning. As you should know, your calendar is telling you that Thanksgiving is on the way. And as is our tradition here at Fellowship, we will receive our uh, Thanksgiving offering during our Thanksgiving Eve service that Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock in Cran Hill Ranch is going to be uh, one of those uh, ministries that we bless and partner with. So Chris, welcome this morning uh, down here to Hudsonville, not so far away uh, from the ranch, but bring us an update. What's happening right now? Well, I know for many of you, this has been a pretty crazy last couple of months that we've had, and it's been the same at Cran Hill. Uh, first of all, I wanna say thank you from uh, all of the people at Cran Hill, Scott, our president, our staff, uh, and the people that come to Cran Hill for your amazing generosity and support over the years. Uh, you guys have helped make Cran Hill what it is today. And I feel like if we didn't have COVID, I would have had a little bit different update this year. You know, on average, we're seeing about 30,000 to 35,000 people a year. And a lot of that is due to your guys' involvement in the ranch. So I wanted to say thank you for that. 
To give you a quick update on what we did this summer, many of you know we were not able to host our summer camp programs. And many of you maybe had kids that were planned to go and got a call from our staff to say, hey, we're not gonna be able to do that due to the pandemic. So we we're all as a staff a little bit worried about what does ministry look like if we don't host summer camp. And God did some amazing things. I remember being on a mower after we got word that we were able to open up the campground and we all ran to lawn mowers and started mowing the grass so it looked nice for you. And I watched as the first camper rolled in and we all, you could see the people on the mower stop and like, yes, we were so excited. And it didn't stop there. What we saw was a tremendous amount of relief, not from our staff, or not only from our staff, because we got to do ministry, but from the people that came. People that were stuck at home, their kids had gone through the hardest school that they've had to go through. Parents like me were struggling with homeschooling our kids and trying to figure out how to be a teacher and also work and do all the other things. And we saw them come, and within a day or so, because it takes a little bit to ramp down, you could see their, their expressions and their joyfulness come out. And you could see this relaxation of the parents and the kids. And eventually, if, if they did a full week stay, you'd see by the end of the week, they were just, they were free running all over the place. And you could tell that they had just had this moment of relief uh, from what we are all going through. So um, what we saw was higher numbers in our family campground than we've seen in the last five years, which is exciting. We had more people come out, maybe because they didn't have anything else they could go do. Uh, but also because they had heard about Cran Hill. I talked to a lot of people on the wagon rides this year, uh, maybe some of you that were second year, third year time coming to Cran Hill, and they were brought by friends. And that made me think back to 1968 when that was how all of you came, was that friends told you about this place up north that you could go to where God was transforming lives. As we move forward this fall today, we do not have an open facility. We are booked solid this weekend with special needs retreat, with friendship or um, uh, guest groups and retreats that are coming up and families using the cottages. So that is a huge praise because we did not see that coming. So we're praising God for that. And we're moving forward to 2021 where we will host our summer camp programs. And so we're excited to announce that our registration is open. We already have 200 plus people signed up for camp next year. And uh, we're rolling out our summer camp brochures soon. So we'll be getting those in the mail. And we're running full friendship camp and retreat groups as well. So we're excited. God's doing some amazing things. And, uh, and it's because of his providence and his sovereignty that we've been able to get through the pandemic without any major setbacks and continue doing the ministry that he's called us to do. Isn't that awesome? That is... Again, God continues to move. His spirit is powerful. And, and there's really three uh, groups. You're really kind of divided into three groups. There's uh, our children who, who love going to uh, the ranch. Uh, many of you who go up as families and you camp there, that is an annual family tradition that you are not willing to give up. And then there's a number of you uh, who go up repeatedly and, and you are serving, um, you are working, you are painting, you are building, you are constructing. And, and it is great to see how, how you are a part of the ranch that way. So Chris, maybe what are, what are some things on the horizon for 2021? Maybe some projects, maybe some dreams or some desires that the ranch has for the future. Well, we have many dreams. Uh, I, so I have to tell you that in the midst of a very Dutch camp, uh, you know, heritage, I'm the one French guy that comes and says, hey, we could go do all these things. Um, but uh, they, they, they tally me back a little bit. And, um, but we have some dreams. We're looking at the possibility of uh, launching our new building. Uh, we're looking at building a new chapel facility. We're excited for that. Uh, so we're praying for God's guidance in that uh, area. Uh, but we're also looking for more groups to come up and do things. Uh, I have to point out, he's going to be so mad at me. Roger and Carol have done such a great job bringing groups up to Cran Hill, gathering volunteers. Uh, they, they've painted three of our five Saddle Ridge cabins along with other folks. Uh, those are, that's a big project, and, uh, and they've dedicated lots of time and energy to that. So thank you to them. And... Um, uh, we're just looking for opportunities for people to come up and enjoy what we're doing. Uh, we're asking you guys for three big things uh, as we move forward, and there's, there's volunteering, which is huge. Uh, also, um, if you have a gift that you'd like to support the ranch with uh, through the Thanksgiving giving uh, or personally, uh, we, that we put that to good use, and we, we're very strict on how we use our funds, and we make sure that we use them responsibly. But would you pray for us? Um, as a ministry, um, a lot of our 
um, uh, leaders in the ministry are uh, 30, 40 years old. And so we're seeking God's guidance in what the ministry looks like for the next 20, 30 years. And so would you just pray for us as we move forward in faith that God's going to provide the resources and the people to come uh, that we can continue doing ministry. But just pray for our staff as we go to hire folks for the summer, uh, as we uh, get through the winter months uh, and whatever that looks like down the road. Just pray that we would seek God's guidance always and that we would always remember that he is sovereign in what we do. I love it. If, if you want to spend some time with Chris, he's going to be uh, in the lobby uh, between worship services. This morning there is a table set up. You can always go online and look for Cranhill Ranch. There is uh, a, a great collection of information and pictures and stories and testimonials there. But would you thank God one more time for the ministry that is Cranhill Ranch? Thank you, brother. I also want to say thank you uh, this morning because as we step into this brand new week, when we arrive at Wednesday, that is November 11th, and that is an opportunity for us to acknowledge all of those brave women and brave men uh, who have served uh, within the United States military, who have defended, who have protected, um, who have advocated for freedom, not only here in America, but around the world. And uh, we've put together a video a uh, collection of your pictures, and that is going to be made available on Wednesday. You will find it um, posted online. And as you find that, and, and as you see those faces, if you could just stop and pause and, and pray not only for them, and, and pray not only for those who are currently serving, but spend time in prayer and thank the Lord for the freedom that we have and, and for the opportunity that we have to make much of him. Amen, church? And then as you prepared for worship this morning, I know there are a lot of updates that were uh, being shared with you on the LED wall. Um, those items are, are posted online as well. For those of you who are joining us from home, you're going to be able to go to uh, the prayer updates. You'll be able to find items under our resources tab as well. I know there is a lot there. And that means that there are many people who need prayer. So let's commit to that, not only this morning, but let's be a people of prayer in conversation with God for one another. Amen? Let's pray together now. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who calls, uh, who speaks into our hearts who convinces us in our minds that there is no better place to be than gathered in your presence, whether we're, we're doing that right now online, whether we're doing that right now in a sanctuary or in a fellowship hall. By the power of your Holy Spirit, we are joined together and we turn to you. Father, we turn to you because you alone are the one who has created our lives. We turn to you because you alone are the one who, by the shed blood of your only son, you've redeemed our lives. You've forgiven us of our sins. You have called us your sons and your daughters. And then by the power of your Holy Spirit, our lives are filled. Our lives are sanctified. You are teaching us, telling us, showing us more and more every day how to say no to the things that are done in the darkness and how to say yes to the things that are done as a testimony in the light. We thank you for the light of Cranhill Ranch. We thank you for Chris's ministry, for all those with whom he partners. We thank you that even though the past months have been indescribable at times, the ranch has not slowed down. That families, that adults, the lives of children have been impacted. As we say, they have been transformed. And we trust you with the future, God, because you are already there. We thank you for over 200 registrations already for the boys and the girls who are going to be there. We ask that you bring all of the volunteers who are going to serve. And we pray that you continue to push out the walls, that you continue to push out the boundaries and that the great news of Jesus Christ will be proclaimed in every building and outside in your beautiful creation. 
Father God, we thank you also for the men and women who are here this morning, again, who are joining us online. This week gives us the opportunity to stop and to pause and to say thank you for risking your life. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Thank you for your willingness to fight, for your willingness to defend. Father God, we acknowledge that, that those who, who bear that mark of veteran, they have seen things, they have heard things, they have experienced things. And Father, sometimes that is kept close to them and it is not always shared. Sometimes it is hard to process what they've been called to do. This morning we say thank you. And Father, we pray that as they have needs, that you will answer and minister to each and every one of them. And for those who are serving today, wherever they may be stationed, some near but some very far away from home, may the power of your Holy Spirit love them, surround them, comfort them, encourage them. May your Spirit keep them from harm and danger. Father, there are many again this week who have trusted those they love into your loving arms. They've testified how, how they've watched someone transition from this place of time into the presence of your eternity. And even early this morning, Father, we pray for the Tolsma family. As Alexa finally beat cancer. Father, thank you that you have received her into your arms. It is difficult for us as we have so many questions, and yet we know and we believe right now because you are our Father and you always tell us the truth. She is safely home with you. But we do pray that you continue to love on her family and give them everything that they need. Father, for so many other names listed this morning, there are surgeries pending. There are recoveries that are taking place. Some of them are long recoveries. There is pain that is indescribable and difficult to manage. For some, it has been a diagnosis, and to that, a second and a third and a fourth diagnosis. Father, there is much happening in our lives. And yet in the midst of it all, you continue to move with strength and grace and mercy and love. And you certainly remind us we are never alone. But Father, we walk with faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we thank you for the gift of your church and for the opportunity to care for and to love and support one another. Now, Father God, we ask a blessing upon our pastor, Brent, that as he brings the truth of your word, you will feed every hunger, you will satisfy and quench every thirst, and that as we seek to follow after you, all glory, honor, and praise will be yours alone. All of this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue in song as our children are dismissed for children in worship. Please stand with us and let's prepare our hearts for God's word this morning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom life. Oh, 
Please be seated. As you do, please go open up your Bibles to Joshua chapter 4. This morning we're going to continue our, our walk through God's deliverance and how He provided for the Israelites. If you were with us last week, you, I believe you do remember that they made the step and they walked in to the Jordan River, crossing the Jordan River in hopes of going to the location called Jericho, which we uncover in chapter 6. But today we are looking at what our text says is God saying, may we never forget, may we always remember the hand of God and how He had delivered you. When is the last time that you have taken a trip down memory lane? Like maybe it's literally what I did just yesterday. You go into your attic and, and you come across this Rubbermaid tote that is labeled Brent's baseball cards. Maybe for you it's pictures of spring break or, or high school or, or college sports teams. Maybe it's wedding photos. But you, you took the opportunity when you saw it to open it up 
and allow God to, to walk you into a, a season of remembrance. When's the last time you've done that? Sadly, for a lot of us, we are so busy that we do see those boxes in our head right now somewhere in our room, maybe in our garage, maybe in our basement, maybe under our bed, maybe in our closet. But we haven't opened them in a while. Maybe it's because there's some, some painful seasons of life in that box down memory lane, or, or perhaps you're just flat out too busy, and that was another time, that was another you. Perhaps you don't want to go there because of embarrassment. So there's a couple of things that that have been brought to light in my life, and they, they, they're made evidently known as far as why some people in my family, especially my three children, think I'm a little bit weird. Because I happen to find some of my memory lane tokens that, that I have held on to for, for whatever reason. We all have them, so don't think you're better than me. But I was in my gun cabinet uh, this past week and just making sure I have enough everything I need. If you hunt, you know what I'm talking about. You can never have enough shells. And then I came across something that I totally forgot about. See, it was a season in my life where, where the, the, the phrase, every boy needs a dog, and a man's best friend is his dog. I found Sam's dog tag. I got Sam when I was 16. Red Fox Lab Mini. She was beautiful. I named her after John Wayne. He had a movie named Hondo. And his dog was Sam. The Red Fox Lab. Sam went everywhere with me. She went hunting, she went fishing. If I went down to the ice cream store, Sam went with me. And yes, she did get a lick out of my ice cream cone. Sam was awesome. She was my best friend. She went everywhere I went. That was except for when Sarah came in the picture. And very quickly, Sam didn't really care much about me. And, and Sam followed Sarah around to the house for about a year and a half until Sam died with the West Nile virus. We buried her under the cedar tree right down the road here about a half a mile underneath, right by the river. But I kept her dog tags. There will never be another dog like Sam. I remember being a kid, going to my grandma and grandpa's house, 4350. This was on his TV stand. See, if you were looking into his family room, it would be the, the window overlooking the back 40 and the pond, and there'd be my grandpa's chair with the 22 sitting right behind it. And then there would be this coffee table, and then my grandma's chair. And the opposite side of the room would be a television, and, and that's where I first watched Hondo. But nevertheless, this harmonica was always on that stand. It was right next to that con container holding all them walnuts that he would crack and make a mess all over. You all know what I'm talking about? My grandpa would pull this thing out. And as a kid, memorized by the ability to Honestly, I have no idea if he was any good at it. I can't carry a tune in a bucket, so all I know is when I see this that my grandma gave to me when grandpa passed away, I remember the greatest man that ever walked on earth in my life. World War II vet, a faithful faithful husband. I will never forget it. 
Most recently in my world, I was joking around with, with Pastor Sean about three weeks ago that, that you guys might be mourning the reality that it's been about two years if you've been with fellowship for a long time. It's been two years since, since you have had an analogy in a message that had something to do with, with hunting because MVB is not here anymore. So I wanted to change that a little bit. How many of us can say, the first two shots, after taking the bow out of the case, you can split an arrow like that. I've only done it once. Never came close doing it again. But I'll never forget it. This is literally hanging on the rack of one of the deer that are hanging in my garage. Because I don't want to forget how cool that is. The story that we're going to be looking at today is a, is a clear declaration of God saying to his people, hey boys, hey girls, don't forget about what has just happened. Don't forget about what I am doing for you. Don't forget about the promises that I will never leave unanswered. In that tub last yesterday, I was reminded of some simpler days, reminded of some, some simple things that happened in my life that helped transform who I am to see the hand of God in my life. There's things in that book, there's things in that tin that are a little embarrassing. Two phrases came to mind, and most of you won't have any idea what they mean, but, but one of them came to mind just yesterday, and it was the phrase, fire not good. A bunch of underage boys coming face to face with Lori Wallbeck. Another thing that I thought was really, really cool is I collected ticket stubs. <laughs> I literally had a, a, a Detroit Lions glass cup, and inside was, was jammed full of ticket stubs to the movies. My first ever Michigan football game, it was in 1989, we played Ohio, I'm sorry, oh, I'm, Iowa, lost. My first concert, Alan Jackson, we got to listen to him sing Drive. It was 18 feet from bow to stern light. Second hand, got a dealer. Love it. The weirdest thing that I saw in there was a Hudsonville High School review show. Program from 1991-1992. It, it appears that 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 was also the day where I saw my grandpa cry for the very first time as, as they were concluding the program singing Lee Greenwood's song. It is also the day where I saw for the very first time the man that would soon be my brother-in-law. You see, there was a part of that program that I remember very well where, where Craig, who was a, a, a freshman, and his sister Terry was a senior, and, and Craig hasn't uh, grown into his body yet, and neither has his voice, and they were singing together, Sonny and Cher, I Got You, Babe. And Craig was Cher, <laughs> and Terry was Sonny. I still remember Craig on his tippy toes doing everything he could at the end of that song to grab a hold of Terry's arm and lift up and say, I got you, babe. If you know Terry Duran or Craig Hookstra, please let them know that they showed up today. Memories, we have them. They make us who we are. Some of us are making memories today. Some of us are avoiding memories of yesterday. Some of us are avoiding allowing God to use us as a memory 
for the future. I trust that you have found your text for this morning. With it, will you please stand? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the only truth this world has ever known is open before us. And as we discuss these 10 very, very important verses, Lord, remind us of your faithfulness. Remind us of the provisions that you have had for us and you continue to lead us down. Lord, you have a plan that is so much greater than any of us can understand. So, Lord, may we trust you. May we seek you. May we become more like you today. Father, thank you for hearing our prayer. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's children said, amen. Will you please be seated? Follow along with me, will you? Joshua 4, 1 through 10. When all the nation had finished passing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, take 12 men from from the people, from each tribe, a man. And command them, saying, Take twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly. And bring them over with you, and lay, with, and lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men from the people of Israel, whom he had appointed, a man from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark, of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan. Take up each of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of tribes of the people of Israel, that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. And the people of Israel did just as Joshua commanded and took up 12 stones out of the midst of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, just as the Lord told Joshua. And they carried them over with them to the place where they lodged and laid them down there. And when Joshua set up the 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant had stood, and they are there to this day. Brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, this is the only truth this world's ever known. Amen? First thing, if you have your notes and you're following along, whether online or right here, the first thing that I want us to know is they all experience the provision of God. This is not something that is new. The Israelites, as we read in the chapters 2 and 3, we read that all the Israelites, even the ones were complaining, I got to soften that up, crabbing, let's just go, crabbing, even the ones crabbing, saying, God, I don't want to go here. God, I don't want to do this. All of them entered the Jordan River. Every single one of them, even the ones that were saying, no, this is not what I think we should do, God. No, this cannot be the plan that you have in store for me or for us, God. No, I don't have what it takes to walk through this Jordan River. Let us remind ourselves. It is harvest season. They've had a lot of rain. The water is over the banks of the river. It is not a pleasant idea to walk across the Jordan River. For most of us, we think of a river, and and our quickest reference is what we have three miles down the road called the Grand River, which in many places you can walk across the Grand River, and the water will likely not get higher than your waist. The Jordan River is not like that. The Grand River is sandy. I've walked across it several times. The Jordan River is rocks. The Jordan River is rough. The Jordan River is is almost unthinkable about walking through and thinking that they're wearing flip-flops. I kept thinking this week in my head, Jimmy Buffett would have loved this song because all these Israelites are blowing out their flip-flops walking across the Jordan River. 
that's likely what's going on. It's not a fun walk. It's miserable. It's hot. It's exhausting. It's fearful. Yet every one of them, when they walked and they put their foot following the Ark of the Covenant, they put their foot on the rocks and kept walking as the walls of the water are still high and still scary. They are walking and they are trusting one step at a time through the entire trek. Some of us today, let's be honest, all of us today, are in our own Jordan River. Maybe your Jordan River today is, is uh, sorting out God's plan for your life. Maybe you are a student, maybe you're college and high school, and you're thinking, what's the next chapter in life look, for, look like for you? And you're wondering, God, what on earth can I do? Maybe you're thinking other people are, are talented in this area or gifted, or, or maybe you think that other people are smarter than you, and you're wondering, what on earth am I going to do? How can I be an effective son or daughter of the living God? And you're tired, and your flip-flops have blown again. And you question, do I even hear God's voice right? That, that I am who He says I am? That I have been given everything that I have to glorify Him? And maybe right now, student, that you're looking up at these walls that the Lord has separated and said, I need you to walk down here, my loved one. And you're scared. Your feet are sore. Your heart is broke. Are you going to keep walking? What about for you, maybe middle age? When life starts to grab a hold of the idea of regret. I should have done this differently. I should have married somebody else. I should have moved. I should have switched careers. I should have. I should have. Of course, all lies from the pit of hell. We need to understand that. But, but when we're walking down that path that God has ordained, and it is rocky like it is for perhaps you today, how can you get through doubting God? How can we walk through the, the difficulties, the fears, the questions, the doubts, without one step at a time trusting in the Word of God? And middle-agers, there's not a time in your kid's life right now that they need to see the faithfulness in you than, than they ever have before. Grandparents, or those that age group that desire to be grandparents. Your bodies are falling apart. I hear that every day. Brent, it stinks getting old. Medications, physical therapy, doctor's appointments, it's easy when our bodies and our minds are growing tired and growing frail and getting weak. It's easy to be in that journey, in that Jordan River journey, and to, to question, God, are you here for me? God, are you with me? God, what do you have for me in this river today? And maybe we have some people in here that are just done. I 
I want to change your mind. Because when these people were originally walking through the Jordan, yeah, there was those crabs. Yeah, they were those that were elderly. They were the ones that were young, that had ideas and dreams for their lives. But there was also those that wanted to quit. And friends, the faithful ones in this congregation, wherever you are, we can't let people quit. We can't help that. We, we need to help that, that young mom with one, two, three children who is trying to, to be everything. Or that dad that feels like his, the weight of the world is on his shoulders. We need to encourage them. How can we encourage them? Let's look at our text. Verse 6. This may be a sign among you that when your children ask in time to come, what do those stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off, so these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. Friends, the second thing I want you to remember is we need to share this provision with our people. Not only this, the Israelites walking through the Jordan, but, but how God in the past, how Yahweh in the past has delivered you as a human being, as a son and daughter, through a journey of the past. We all have them. Some of us overcoming a terrible season in life, maybe addiction, maybe cancer. Maybe the loss of a loved one, but, but by God's grace, you have walked through a season and people need to know how you did it, where you put your foot, the next step, and the next step after that, where did you put it? The people of this world need to know how, how ugly seasons in our lives where we have walked into disobedience, where God has stepped in and he has redeemed that spot in our lives and made it a tool for us to share what he has done for us. We all have them. It's October 31, 1997. You probably have no idea where you were that day. The night before, I was just elected homecoming king at Hudsonville High School. The next day, I'm in the back of an Ottawa County cop car being arrested for taking stuff that was not mine. You see, me and some buddies had this plan of, of building this fort in the back of this 10-acre woods off of Tyler. And we had this idea that we were going to build this, this barn, and, and we're going to put a table in it, and we're going to play cards and, and smoke cigarettes and drink IBC root beer until we puked. But sitting in the back of that Ottawa County Sergeant's car, I knew that the dreams I had for my life were never, ever going to unfold again. And I had to go talk to Captain Blaine Coops, and I had to explain to him the foolish decision that me and a couple of buddies made, but primarily me, and, and I had to withhold my name from the cadet program in the police department. Dumb. But we've all done stupid stuff, right? Returned all the lumber, wrote a note of apology,
Right there is a place where the Satan likes to play. You're a screw up. That's exactly what all those teachers said. You're not going to mount to anything. There's, there's not much up there. Some of us hear that every day. Some of us are 50 years old and we still hear someone saying that to us when we were three, four, five years old. Right there, friends, that is your Jordan today. Some of us have been lied to for so long that, that our Jordan is right there and God wants nothing more than to walk right into that Jordan and take that boulder off your shoulder that's called a lie and He wants you to walk in obedience and in truth and in His way. It is only by God's grace, it is only by His mercy, it is only by His forgiveness that this screwed up 17-year-old kid From a world standpoint, he'd have no right to be able to talk and speak and share the only truth this world has ever known of one of the greatest churches in the area. But yet by his mercies, he has given me the opportunity. So again, friends, right now we are asked, we are on a journey, and we are crossing some ugly, ugly headwaters. And we are like the Israelites, and, and we, are, we are going to be on a journey that God has provided for us. He is going to protect us. His word is all of the provisions are for us. Are we going to walk in faith, trusting in Him in the unknown? Are we? Will you? This text, the Israelites already had walked all the way through. They've done the hard work once. They have already said, yes, it's going to be a long, painful walk, but we are going to because we know the reward that is coming at the end. But some of us, as we have in the text, some of us are asked to go back. Some of us are asked, go back in the middle of the Jordan. I need you to pick up a stone, not just a pebble stone or, or one that David threw at Goliath. No, a boulder, a rock, likely something 100, 150 pounds. Mount it on your shoulder and walk back as a reminder that I was here, that I led you, that I sustained you, that I gave you everything that you possibly could need. Some of us are carrying that boulder right now. That boulder is ministry. That boulder is perhaps faithfulness. Don't drop it. Carry that thing. Boldly carry that on your shoulders. Others, others, and I want to talk to you briefly here. Others started this journey with a massive boulder on your shoulder already. Called sin. Some of us have been carrying that sin all of our adult lives. Maybe it's lust. Maybe it's greed. Maybe it's an addiction of some kind. Maybe we're so stuck on ourselves and what we think is right for us that we can't overlook the reality that we may be wrong and God may be right. Don't leave this place without ditching your rock of sin. Drop it. Drop it and live. And live very quickly, remembering to live and trust in God's provision. Friends, there's sins that are holding down good people right now. Let them go today. And very quickly, just a, a reminder here. 
That is certainly not an easy endeavor. And with the Spirit, the reward is great. Friends, can't imagine physically walking through the Jordan River. Fear in the heart, fear in the head, fear in your body for navigating one step at a time. But, but I could only think about it this way as, a, as I was going over my head what the Jordan River could look like. And I know I got to get there. I know the Ark of the Covenant is in front of me. I know the Word of God is leading me. I know I have one thing to do, act in purity and blameless before the Lord my God. But these boulders are huge and they're sharp. I kept thinking about the, the boulders that align the, the pier head in Grand Haven or Holland. You know, the ones that you jump across if there's not a moss on it. I got to believe that's what the Jordan River's bottom was like. So friends, I want to leave you with one thought. As a follower of Jesus Christ, you know that you are walking in the authority of God, following His Word. But friends, He is leading us, this generation, through the Jordan right now. And He is asking every one of us, man, woman, and child, to walk faithfully following Him. He is going to provide the way. He is going to separate the seas. The walk is going to be tough as we are literally walking boulder to boulder one step at a time. Friends, will your life be an example of God's provision? Will your life be an example of, of faithfulness and trusting one step at a time in the hand and the leadership of God? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, you have called us to, to live lives making much of you. And Father, we do want to be men and women who seek you, who trust you, who live for you, but also men and women who take every opportunity to share what you have done in our lives with those in our homes, in our community. Father, you've been good to us. Your word is true. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for loving us and calling us your own. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you please stand? The fascinating thing is when we open up this word, the only truth this world has ever known, account after account, we hear, we see, we learn to love the hand, the work of God. I can only imagine the smile on God's face when He looks at you today. That is my son, that is my daughter, whom I love. For they're walking in faith today. They are trusting in me today. They're relying on me today. Faithful brothers and sisters, the accounts of Hebrews 11 the examples of great faith, they are examples for us. But friends, every one of you are an example of great faith for those to come after you. In the Jordan that you are in today, will you choose to trust? Will you choose to say, yes, I will walk. Yes, I will be faithful. Yes, I will encourage. And I will trust that God is God and he will provide for me. Will you do that, friends? Amen.
You're our creator, our life sustainer, deliverer, our comfort, our joy. Throughout the ages, you've been our shelter, our peace in the midst of the storm. With signs and wonders, you've shown your power. With precious blood, you showed us your grace. You've been a helper, a liberator, a giver of life without end. Sing it out. We will remember. We will remember. We will remember the words of your